The 1990 NBL Rotary Challenge is brought to you by HBF Advantage Insurance and the Swan Brewery, makers of Emu Export Lager. Welcome to the Perth Entertainment Centre for the 1990 Rotary Challenge. Tonight, the Perth Wildcats celebrate their first game on their new home court as they line up against their old rivals, the Adelaide 36ers, in a game that promises to present the very best of basketball action. to the Perth Entertainment Centre, a new look venue for the Perth Wildcats, indeed a new look Wildcats lineup. This is the third annual Rotary Charity Challenge. The proceeds from this match of course going to Rotary Health Research, some very, very worthy causes there. Tonight, two teams remarkably different in lineup from last year. Some changes uh, taken by choice, other changes forced on these two teams. Let's take a look at the two sides now as they will line up tonight and the Adelaide 36 is profiled by Andrew Kay. The Adelaide 36ers have had something of a clean-out, not quite as major as the Brisbane Bullets, but nevertheless quite significant. But even more major than changes to the playing staff is the change of head coach. Don Shipway takes over from Gary Fox, who after three years decided to step down. I think it's important that the, the program is, is built around um, certain aggression that we need to have in the team. And, and certainly we need people in the organisation who are aggressive and committed to uh, the success of the team. Shipway was formerly Fox's assistant and before that assistant to Ken Cole when the Sixers won the championship in 1986. The beginning of this season also sees the end of an era in Adelaide. Veteran 36er Peter Ally has decided to hang up the boots but will still be with the team in his new capacity as assistant coach. Now to the playing staff. American import Orlando Phillips is no longer with the side. He's been replaced by Tom Schaefer, a six foot seven forward from Iowa State University. Dwayne Nelson has chosen North Melbourne as a better option, but the team loses nothing by the inclusion of Canberra Cannon's tough man, Simon Cottrell. Add to that the experience of Dan Clawson and Mark Davis, the strength and raw talent of Mark Bradkey, and the speed of Scott Ninnis, and the Sixers remain a formidable opponent. Outside the perimeter, Adelaide boasts the three-point kings, Mike Mackay and Daryl Pearce, a lineup well and truly strong enough to test even the best defence. Well, indeed, we will see tonight, and they're up against another New York lineup. Let's have a look at the Wildcats in profile by Sevens Neil Pope. Nineteen eighty-nine is a year the Perth Wildcats would rather forget. What started out as a possible championship season became a nightmare beset by tragedy, injuries and the pilot's hike. The team's toughest year ended sadly with a 55-point thrashing at the hands of North Melbourne in the semis. But that, as they say, is history. The Cats are back with a new home, a new lineup, and an even greater appetite for success. Their new home is the Perth Entertainment Centre with 8,000 plus seats, an increase of 3,000 on the Superdrome. The new lineup includes two American imports, Jeff Allen, a 210 centimetre or 6 foot 11 centre from New York, and Ricky Grace, a lightning fast guard from Dallas. Um, I'm going to try and get as many rebounds as possible and try and just fit in you know, with the, with the concept that Allen has for us offensively. I think if we can uh, get the ball off the boards and, and fast break a little bit, we're going, to, we're going to beat a lot of teams. Well, I like <clears throat> the fast pace style of play. I like, you know, full court game because that's when I feel like my speed can show and uh, help the team and uh, as coach said you know we have some really fast guys on this team so uh, we're just going to try and use that speed and we have some really good inside guys too so we're just going to try and mix it all together. 
The third recruit is 19-year-old Victorian David Close, who hails from the AIS and recently toured the United States with the Australian under-20 side. I've always wanted to, to play in the NBL and um, it looks like I'm going to get the chance. On the debit side, Ned Coton has gone to the State League and the Black Pearl, Cal Bruton, has hung up his boots. Uh, we're not really trying to fill Cal's shoes. I think what we've got to do is uh, play a different type of game. Uh, Ricky's a completely different sort of player to Cal. He's not, uh, not the outside shooter and the one-on-one -on -one player. He's more a penetrator and a passer and uh, those sort of things. So I think uh, the Perth crowds will be seeing different things, but uh, just as good. James Crawford won't be playing tonight. He's still recovering from ankle surgery, but expects to be fit for the regular season opener. Ankle is coming on very well. We've been doing uh, a lot of hard work lately after the operation to make sure we get it back because of our last year was a very severe injury and we I tried to play through it and actually it made it worse in the final. All up, the Cats are fairly happy and want to erase last year's memories by making 1990 their year. I'm certainly hoping so. Uh, it's a big move over here. 3,000 more people in there. Also got uh, three strong players coming into the program, so we're very confident. So two largely untried lineups, I guess. Wally Foreman, welcome back from Mount Smart Stadium to the Entertainment Centre. A versatile performer yourself. <laughs> Just the uh, Jane Fleming long jump, Dan. <laughs> you wonder exactly what's what's hanging on this game, but uh, a good test. Oh yes, I think most interest will centre, local interest will centre on the performance of the two American imports, uh, Jeff Allen and Ricky Grace. No James Crawford tonight, of course, that will impact on the Wildcats' performance, I'm sure. Uh, the 36 has appeared to, to have been content to have done most of their recruiting from within Australia, so it's, uh, they don't look as formidable to me as they have in the past. Perhaps the other interesting point will be to see who Al Green chooses to fight with with no Cal Bruton out there. Be interesting to see indeed. The referees who will have to keep tabs on that from Adelaide, Jeff Weeks, and from Perth, Sid Stevens. We'll be back with the starting lineups the other side of this break. And welcome back to the Superdrome, a near sellout crowd, the Superdrome, I've done it already, the Perth Entertainment Centre, a near sellout crowd for the first game here. Let's go to the courtside commentator, John Rogers, to introduce the starting fives. Ladies and gentlemen, the starting fives for tonight's game. First of all, for the Adelaide 36ers, number four, Daryl Pierce. Number seven, Mark Bradkey. Number eight, Tom Schaefer. Number 10, Michael Mackay. And number 33, Mark Davis. And their coach, Don Shipway. And on the bench for Adelaide tonight, Scotty Ninnis, Matthew Reese, Dan Clawson, an old face here from Perth, Simon Cottrell and Al Green. And on this history-making night, ladies and gentlemen, with the Wildcats, first game at the Perth Entertainment Centre, here is the starting five for the Wildcats. Number five, the enforcer, Tiny Pinder. Number six, and captain of the Wildcats, Mike Ellis. One of the prize recruits for the Perth Wildcats, a big welcome for number nine, Jeff Allen. Fresh from overseas triumphs, number 10, Trevor Torrance. And to complete the Wildcats lineup, number 15, Ricky Amazing Grace. On the bench for the Wildcats, number four, Eric Watterson, number 11, Steve Davis, number 20, Brett Ellis, 23, Craig Evans, 24, Robbie Dempster, and 44, David Close, and the new full-time coach for the Wildcats, Alan Black.
Well, that's a pretty hard act to follow, what? Sure is, David. It's, uh, it's impressed the very big crowd that's in attendance here. At the entertainment centre. I'm not saying anything. If I just say here, I can't make a mistake, can I? Referees are Sid Stevens with his back to camera and Jeff Weeks from Adelaide. And the tip-off between Mark Bradkey and the new big man from the Perth Wildcats, Jeff Allen from New York. Has a business degree, wants a job in real estate here in Perth. Gets the first touch of the ball, but first possession was to Adelaide, although that's picked up by Mike Ellis now. Torrance. Torrance and Ellis both went to the USA and Argentina over the summer. Foul called by Sid Stevens. Four, hang, push up. First foul of the night, Darrell Pierce. And it sends one of the Wildcats to new American imports to the free throw line this case because Crawford and Pinder both naturalized last year that certainly has allowed the Wildcats to increase their playing strength not a lot of Ricky Grace but apparently a highly skilled player as Ellis goes in for the rebound he wasn't able to control it it's taken away by Ninnis who gives it to Davis comes down very quickly to Ellis and the Wildcats on the break inside they go to Pinder beautiful pass to, to Torrance who gets the basket and will get the bonus shot as well Schaefer came through underneath him nice drive the assist came from Mike Ellis and it was McKay who was credited with the foul although it was Schaefer who actually came through underneath Bradkey grabs the rebound. Both Bradkey and Ricky Grace wearing those Lycra shorts underneath their playing uniforms. So the first real test of the Wildcats set defense. Bradkey fumbles and travels. Well, if nothing else, Wally, Grace moves quickly. He is quick. Oh, beautiful pass too to Allen, who wasn't able to control it initially. Misses with the shot. Bradkey with the rebound. Chance now for Pierce for the 36ers. Too far. Wildcats from the side, and they want to run. There's no doubt about that. This is Grace again. Ball for the double dribble. Now, back home, he may have gotten away with that. Long pass to Davis, and the 36ers are forced to settle it down. McKay with the shot. Allen with the rebound, Torrance goes back to Ellis. This is the Wildcats of a couple of seasons ago. The run and stun Wildcats as Torrance makes good. It's six points to none. Torrance with three. Bradkey, great pass from McKay, good vision. Bradkey just hung out to the left of the keyway. Very, very talented player, Mark Bradkey. There was some thought he may have been on the sides of the Perth recruiters. Fabulous reject by Mark Davis. Davis in the NBL All-Star lineup for the past four years. It's off Bradkey's leg. Steady, 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 take it easy. Sid Stevens calling the players apart. Scrimmage was in the keyway. Pender is baseline. Decides to turn and jump and finds range. So the Wildcats go to eight-two lead. This is Pierce for the 36ers, being guarded by Grace, who has infringed. And that's the first foul on the Perth Wildcats. And again, back home, he may well have gotten away with us having his hand on the opponent. Only very slightly built is Ricky Grace, number 15 for the Wildcats. But gee, is he quick? Inside they go to Bradkey. He is going to be the cornerstone of this team this season. There's no doubt about that, the young boomer. And he has their only points so far. It's eight to four. Blocking foul, Mike McKay. Don Shipway, been assistant coach for four years of this Adelaide side. Stepped in in controversial circumstances when the 36ers parted company with Gary Fox. Grace fails to find it. He was finding those on Thursday night at training. McKay comes away with it. Three-point range. Misses. Oh, 
Grace got up there very, very well. By himself, finds Ellis. The ball sticks to the basket. Bradley came away with it. What's the call? Tiny Pinder reaching over the basket is called for his first foul. Well, Adelaide seemed just a, a touch off the pace so far. Wildcats a very, very professionally trained outfit this season. Oh, still on the dribble, it's at the side, it's on the dribble. That's not to say they weren't professionally trained last year, but with uh, Alan Black now a full-time coach, the focus is on training and performance right through this season. It's 8-4, to four. the Wildcats lead the 36ers. McKay, whistle on play, and again the foul is called on Grace. And it won't surprise if both Grace and uh, Jeff Allen take some time to come to grips with the Australian refereeing. This is Schaefer, a, new one, a newcomer as far as the 36ers are concerned. Allen is up there, but it's tipped in eventually by Davis. So, the 36ers are back to within two points. Grace goes to Torrance for three. Another chance for Grace. To Torrance again, they're combining well. Score does not count. Torrance is called for the travel, so a turnover. 36ers in possession. McKay. Pierce from three-point range. Doesn't go. Allen up strongly and had Bradkey in his back. Kevin Brad, out of the arm. First changes are being affected by the Wildcats other side of the court. Eric Watterson comes in. As does David Close. David Close captained the Australian under-21 team on a tour of the USA last season. Spent most of last year at the AIS. Is from Boleyn and Victoria originally. And there was some interest shown in him during the off-season by North Melbourne coach Bruce Palmer. Well, it wouldn't have been for performances like that. That's his first touch. The one he wants to begin. Schaefer drives baseline. No basket. Foul is number 10 for the block. Trevor Torrance. One, one now. One and one. Called for the block. See it again. You can see Schaefer driving the baseline and Torrance hadn't made position but uh, Schaefer hadn't put the shot up either. Second foul, Trevor Torrance. Schaefer from Iowa. The land of corn and potatoes. Schaefer was shooting one and one then, not two free throws. Well, Tiny took a big bump from behind. Gets up gingerly. Mark Davis has his first foul. We'll see that again. Pender cut baseline. Cheek to cheek meeting between the two big men. Tiny Pender, in fact, the elder statesman of the Wildcats side this year. Jeff Allen is 28. Tiny Pender is 33. And the former Harlem Globetrotter. Pierce. Okay. Schaefer. There's no one moving for him. Davis doesn't need a move to make position. Bradkey. McKay stops and drops from about 10 feet. Banks it off the glass for two. Eight apiece. Foul called off the ball. Five for the block. Team control. It's gone against Tiny Pender, so that's going to be the battle of the boards tonight. Tiny Pender and Mark Davis. Second foul, Tiny Pender. Pierce hassled by Eric Watterson, and hassled well. Two on one. Should be a regulation two points. Close goes under the basket and makes his first score for the Perth Wildcats. David Close. It's ten to eight. The Wildcats lead by two points. This is Pierce. Now McKay. The 36 is trying to set something up. Close had McKay blocked, but illegally. 44. 
block on the dribbler. One and one now. And so Mike McKay goes to the free throw line, shooting one and one. Wildcats D standing up fairly well, Wally. Yes, it's, they've done a good job so far. We've just over seven minutes to play in this first quarter. OK, we've got a substitution on the shooter. One now. Both teams with numerous fouls beside their names. They're both in the team foul situation as that ball eventually drops. And the 36ers are in front for the first time in the game. It's 11 points to 10 as Watterson takes possession for the Wildcats. Allen is inside, they can't get it to him. He has it now, across the top he goes to close. Pinder in there. Boy, there's some heavy work under that basket. Might be a charity game, but uh, a lot of uncharitable people out there at the moment. There's a lot of contact between Mark Bradkey and Jeff Allen. We talked about the contest between Tiny Pinder and Mark Davis just a minute ago. But Bradkey and Allen are going to be just as tough. A lot of interest, of course, in the new Wildcats playing staff, or the new members of the Wildcats playing staff. David Close, number 44, is one of the three new recruits. Jeff Allen is still out there. He's number nine. Ricky Grace, number 15, is off the court at the moment. And Schaefer goes to Bradkey, and Bradkey puts the ball oh, in the bucket. Clever move, Mark Bradkey. Great move. Okay, two points. That was very From strong 11, play, and the arm. opportunity now Long for Bradkey to increase his team's lead. You see it again. Bradkey found a very tiny lane, made his way through there. A great two. And we'll go to the line, but before that, Alan Black has called the first time out of the game. Take a break and come back and pick up the action in just a moment. This is leading 13 points to 10. Mark Bradkey, having made those two, is going to the line to try to make it three on the bonus shot. Has six points already and four rebounds and has been, I would say, while the outstanding player so far on both sides. He's going to be a, a great player as Mark Bradkey, already an integral part of the Boomers lineup and a young man who's making his mark in Australian basketball without having to have left the shores to do it, other than with Australian teams, of course. This is close now for the Wildcats. He goes back to Davis, uh, sorry, to Torrance. Torrance went looking for Allen, and the ball spills over the baseline. The 36 has gained possession. Nine. Scotty Ninnis, the ball carrier, on court for the first time tonight. He's being guarded by David Close. Davis finds Green under the basket, who's come on as well. Two points to me now, Green. <laughs> it looks like he's going to fight Eric Watterson. He's found to start his combatant, with. hasn't he? <laughs> Watterson goes to Close. Close lobs it in, looking for Allen, who did well to control it. Close across to Watterson. Watterson at the top of the keyway, trying to get around Schaefer, whose hand went in. And so Watterson will go to the free throw line. Foul is number eight. David Close Lock checking out. He just needs to one sharpen one up now. his disposal a little. And Ricky See that Grace foul again. In. The drive through by Watterson. Schaefer just leaning all over it. So Eric Watterson at the free throw line shooting one and one. The other interesting aspect about uh, the Wildcats this season, of course, in addition to their new lineup, is their new home. And any doubts about their ability to fill this centre have been dispelled tonight. It's a capacity crowd, around about 8,000 people, I would suggest. I guess it's only the atmosphere that this entertainment centre can generate that remains under question. Certainly so far, all the signs are good. As the shot goes up from Ninnis, and he's been given a three-pointer there, it was very close to the line, but they now lead, they being the 36ers, 19 points to 11. Watterson finds out on baseline, drives through underneath Bradkey, Checks in for two. Wildcats ball, no doubt about that. The change is being rung by both coaches now. Robbie Dempster checks in for Trevor Torrance. And that leaves the Wildcats with a pretty short lineup on court. Grace, Allen. Biggest man on court to the Wildcats. Goes baseline side of Bradkey again and makes two more. Four points so far, Jeff Allen. Scott Ninnis. 
Well, now that is a really, really cheap foul. Don Shipway thinks it's all right, despite the rather sad look on his face. For Ricky Grace, that's foul number three. That's blocking. Now, unfortunately, Ricky Grace, as Wally said, is going to take some time to get used to this. Have a look at this. He hardly touches Ninnis. And in the NBA, that would have been just fine because Ninnis retained control. His dribbling hand wasn't touched. He's in deep discussion with uh, referee Jeff Weeks, too, just asking exactly what the problem is. Well, of course, Weeks, he is dead right. Under NBL rules and the way it's played in Australia, that counts as a foul. So it's Grace who has to make the adjustment unless we adjust the entire NBL structure. Adelaide ball. You talk about the crowd here. Well, I believe the entire season is all but sold out. The entire regular season. The one gap for people who may wish to come down and watch this side and people from the country thinking of making a weekend of it. In March, the Kmart Classic comes to Perth. Oh, great rejection, but called goaltending. Well, Don Shipway won't like it. Ooh, that's Alan a tough Black call. is applauding. I'd like to see that again. It was a sensational jump by Mark Davis. It really was. Look at this again as the ball goes up. The question is, was the ball on the way down? Let's see if we can pick up the ball. Davis. Oh, well, geez, that touch is a and go. Ball. So I was about to say the Kmart Classic comes to Perth on the 9th, 10th and 11th of March. Some great basketball. Adelaide, Perth, Westside Saints and the Hobart Devils. You'll see it all on 7. But if you get the chance, get on down to the Perth Entertainment Centre. I believe you can book now through the Wildcats office. Mark Davis at the line on that foul. The timeout has been called. The Wildcats trail 17 to 21. Just over four minutes remaining in the first quarter here at the Perth Entertainment Centre and the 36ers lead the Wildcats by four points but they have the opportunity here to extend that lead as Mark Davis goes to the free throw line. And I tell you what, they know how to promote these Wildcats and so do the 36ers. It's just been announced here that both teams are going to stay on court afterwards for as long as is necessary to sign all the autographs that are required. Well, Pinder with an unfortunate rebound there. It's with Dennis now. Green. This is Schaefer. Just inside the three-point three line. Pinder at ground level. Knocked away by Bradkey to Ninnis. In turn, it spills to Dempster. And away go the Wildcats. This is close. Who takes Green on. Schaefer too strong back there. Ninnis, he's outnumbered four to one. Waiting for some support. Not a lot on offer. Schaefer, who's worked hard during this first quarter for the 36ers. He's a likely type. Now Bradkey. Green calling the play. Oh, Davis with all the time in the world. And a strong rebound from Schaefer. The 36ers increase their lead. We've got three and a half minutes to play and they're out by six. Steve Davis made the drive to the basket. He stopped in his tracks and has picked up the foul. See it again. It's Schaefer who stood there first up and then Bradkey with the block. So Steve Davis at the line. Steve Davis, who was born in Oki in Queensland, spent some time in the USA. His first point for the night. So 100% from the free throw line is Steve Davis. Very valuable player off the bench for the Wildcats last year. Oh, unobtrusive but often effective, David, is Steve Davis. As Green puts up the shot, the rebound to Pinder. He wanted to go long. There weren't too many options in that direction, so Watterson goes to close, who's well and truly short. That's it was a clever pass. It was a great pass. <laughs> it was a sensational pass. Dempster with the points. You are think, charitable. I don't think Alan Black saw it as a pass. Check the look on his face. Scotty Ninnis. Oh, Tiny Pinder and Eric Watterson. Double team him. Big Dan Thorson on court, gets his first touch, Davis tries to bank it off the glass, won't go, Dempster, valuable rebound, two points in it, can Pinder even that up, gets Davis off his feet, passes to Dempster who puts it up, finds the net, the scores are level 23 apiece. Ninnis, the ball almost losing control, 
close comes down to assist Watterson. Green. It's been a good comeback by the Wildcats in the latter stages of this first quarter. Just under two and a half minutes to play as McKay puts the shot up. It rims out. And they're all Wildcats arms. This is close. Close drives to the basket. Still can't find the target. Davis can't either. Clawson barges through the pack. Foul Dempster. Okay, sub you got one and one. Substitutions being made over there, and the foul is called on number four, I think he said. Uh, it should have been Robbie Dempster, it was his arm. Maybe it was 24. But it doesn't matter, the 36ers are at the free throw line. Robbie Dempster's the one looking more dejected. <laughs> Robbie Dempster's another player, a little like Steve Davis, I guess, who I suspect could become a valuable player off the bench for the Wildcats. Very, very tough competitor, Rob Dempster. Born in Manjum up here in WA. Spent some time with Illawarra and with Newcastle. Tiny Pender foot in. After Clawson had missed with the first. So he'll get another chance, Big Dan. Gee, he's been around, hasn't he? Dan has been around. A great character from Omaha okay. and uh, played in Nebraska. 31 years of age. Played with the Bullets in 1982. Had a year out in 83. With Adelaide in 84. Then with the old style Perth Wildcats in 85 and 86. And two fairly unhappy years, I've got to say, with Brisbane. Tiny wants to give him another one. Yeah, Dan, two fairly unhappy years with Brisbane in 88 and 89. This is Dempster. Decides to go it alone. Oh, he has played well since he's come on the court. Clawson inbounds. This is Green. Closes with him. Green with a goose step. Ninnis. McKay made good position. It was off balance when he put the shot up. Pinder, very aggressive under the defensive basket. Ellis. Davis to Pinder. And Clawson with a comfortable rebound. So close hassling Green. Green maintains control. Clever competitor. Now Green. Steve Davis acknowledging the whistle. Substitution come in. His foul Davis on Mark 11, Davis. Body push. Got two shots now. Donny Shipway with a few words to Al Green. A couple of times in offense, I'm not sure that Alan Black wouldn't like the Wildcats to go a little wider on the court. They're getting the man up early when Ellis made that run down the right-hand side of the court. He had close wide open on the left-hand side. Whether he didn't see him or ignore him, I'm not sure, but Alan Black was screaming for the pass to be made. Have not shot well from the free throw line, the 36ers. This is Ellis. We've got a minute 20 to play in the first quarter here at the Perth Entertainment Centre. The Wildcats lead the 36ers by a solitary point. 25 plays 24. 27 plays 24. It's a three point break. Steve Davis with two more. Gives him four. Pass from McKay went astray. Tiny Pinder. Ellis. Evans on court for the first time tonight. Boy from Albury in New South Wales. Mike Ellis. Short on range. Gets another chance. McKay, three-point range, can't find it. Almost a clever tip in by Ninnis. Nine turnovers to Adelaide, seven to the Wildcats. And charging foul, Mark Davis. Let's have another look at it. It looked to me as though Ellis had lost control of his own body and that's another tough call on Mark Davis. Yeah I said charging I actually meant blocking but it really was wasn't it? Yes he uh, in fact there didn't appear to be any contact at all I think Ellis was anticipating the contact it didn't come Davis was athletic enough to get out of his way and he was completely off balance but Mike Ellis finds himself at the free throw line and the Wildcats should find themselves out by five points. I was looking for his first points of the game Averaged about 16 points a game last season, if I remember correctly. Had an outstanding season, didn't he? Yeah. So much so that he was picked in the Boomers team to go to the USA and Argentina. 
along with Trevor Torrance. And yes, they've ended uh, from the Wildcats. It's the most improved player. Not bad at 30 years plus. So zero, zero for pushing out. Little hassling by Dan Thorson. So tiny at the line now for the Wildcats. They lead by four, 28-24. 27 seconds left to play in this first quarter. Well, that's only his third point for the game too, Dave. So. Scoring being shared around here this evening. Less than 30 seconds to play in the first quarter here at the Perth Entertainment Centre. And uh, the Wildcats extend their lead to six points, 30 plays 24, as Dave Christensen gets his first stat for the season. A Britain pass to Pinder, not able to convert. He's looking for the foul. The long outlet pass to McKay. They've only got 11 seconds to get this shot up. They'll count the clock down. Green takes close on, but he's still got Pinder to contend with. He was out of control. Ninnis with the last shot of the quarter, and he hits it. So Ninnis makes good on the bell, and at quarter time, the Wildcats lead by four, 30 points to 26. scorer so far with seven points Dempster and Schaefer with six Trevor Torrance and Scott Ninnis with five each Pinder Allen and Davis for the Wildcats each with four points so as Wally said at the end of the first quarter the scoring really has been spread around a fair bit Jeflin number nine for the Wildcats and Dan Clawson double zero for the 36ers to contest the tip-off that starts the second quarter Allen gets it down to close this is Brett Ellis they're all getting a run tonight now Evans, he goes to close across to, to Ellis again. Inside it goes to Evans, who has the ball stripped away, but it spills back to Ellis. Evans lobs it into Pinder. Pinder with the fade away, the fall away jumper. And the ball eventually taken by McKay. Green goes long to Ninnis. That was a brilliant pass. And Ninnis acknowledges it. Two points is the margin. Don Shipway, the Adelaide coach. Evans goes baseline, interfered with, but no foul called. Wildcats no ball at the side. No reset of the shot clock, though. 22 seconds left in this play for the Wildcats. 22 seconds in which to get a shot away. Or, of course, to be fouled or turn the ball over. Coming through. Shoney Pender just calling his position there. Adelaide ball. Al Green. McKay. Adelaide ball at the side. Up came the knee from Craig Evans, I suspect. That's his first foul tonight. Wildcats playing man-to-man -man pretty much all night. Pinder matching up on Schaefer. Schaefer getting inside him, making the laneway for himself, and making the two 30 points apiece. This is close. Evans. McKay on him, and Schaefer. Uh, I missed that one. Might have been a three-second call. It must have been, Dave. That's all I can think it could have been. I couldn't see it either. This is Scott Ninnis. With him is Ellis. And the foul will be on Brett Ellis. And that has forced Alan Black to make a very early substitution. Evans goes out. Torrance comes in. That gives them a little bit more height. Jeff Allen is the tallest man on court for the Wildcats. In fact, he's the tallest man in their lineup now at 210 centimetres. 
seven centimetres taller than both Crawford and Pinder and Steve Davis. There goes the shot from Schaefer, the rebound to Allen. Long outlet pass intended for Torrance. He flicks it back. No, he doesn't. Put out of court. Just out of court. Bradkey coming back in for the 36ers. Clawson goes out. And uh, Trevor Torrance just stretching his hamstring after that sprint down court. I think you'll find Mark Bradkey playing an awful lot of minutes for the 36ers this year. Torrance has got a problem. It'll be interesting to see how much longer he stays out there. This is Green. Ninnis with the shot. Went right across the top of the basket. Landed with Torrance. Ellis. Pinder wants it long. Pinder from the baseline. Oh, what a shot. And the basket stands. What a shot. Absolutely sensational, Tiny Pinder. Let's check it out again. Tiny got himself inside Schaefer. I'm not sure how. And over Bradkey. Really did it very, very well. Al Green checks out, along with Mike McKay for the 36ers. Daryl Pierce is back in. And so is Mark Davis. So pretty much close to a starting five for Adelaide out there at the moment. Tiny Pinder, six points so far tonight. Couldn't quite make it seven. So Pierce comes forward again. Jeff Allen, the arm over the top. Nine on the arm, we're shooting two. He looks a little perplexed. He's probably feeling the same way Ricky Grace was early in the first quarter. Not quite working out the difference between the NBL and American basketball. And they're still wayward from the free throw line. Davis in particular has had difficulties from okay, the strike. Well, of course, it's still very, very early days in the season. The Wildcats didn't travel off season this year. So they really haven't had much game practice at all. Brett Ellis. Davis got the hand in. Wildcats ball. 18 seconds left on the shot clock. Okay, here we go. 9.40 left in the second quarter. Grayson Watterson preparing to come back in for the Wildcats. Torrance, Ellis. The Wildcats looking just a little ragged at the moment. Possibly a result of the number of changes being run by both sides. Both coaches using this game for what it is, a pre-season practice match. Certainly hasn't deterred this very large crowd. Oh, that luck for David Close, he almost picked that up. He's looked good in defence tonight, David Close. Yes, it's only been his, uh, his shooting that's really let him down, but he's obviously a young man with enormous potential the other thing Carl Bruton said about David Close during the week is that he shows leadership ability the 36ers are in front Close goes inside to Allen we haven't seen a lot of him offensively that won't stand that shot yeah, of course David Close talking about leadership ability as I said has captained the uh, Australian under 21 side and has also, I believe, captained the Victorian under-20 side. Still only 19 years of age. He uh, is a marketing student. Allen fights his way through and backs it off the glass. Out number three to one under the basket, but still made it. 8.46 left. Second quarter. Davis. Big three-point shot is good. 36-34, Adelaide in front. Pierce, Green, controlled it well, got underneath Allen. Couldn't get the shot away, but somehow retained possession. Oh, clever check out, look at that. Schaefer, the charge. Well, that's the same whether it's NBA or NBL, I'm afraid. Let's have another look at that. Sid Stevens is making the call. Watto standing there, all right. Eric Watterson, well and truly happy. He could have been set in cement. Reminds Probably me, I've got, to find he was. I've got to find somewhere to park my bike when I go. 
This is Watterson, who's recovered quickly. Now Allen again, obviously stung by my earlier comment. Suddenly starting to show a bit in the offensive keyway. And that basket has brought the Wildcats level with the 36ers again. But now he's having problems at the other end of the court, Jeff Allen. Yeah, another one off the ball. That's two personal fouls on Allen. I'm sure Alan Black would be quite happy with uh, the matchup for Jeff Allen here tonight. And Davis almost pulled it in. Schaefer's shot went astray. This is Green. Pierce. Ali that Pat. fellow has strayed from the Superdrome. This is Watterson. For the best part of the game, Allen is being stood by Mark Bradkey, so it'll be a very good test of his ability, of Allen's ability. As Pierce gets it off to Green. Green has been very closely marked by the Wildcats guards this evening. The shot goes up from Davis, didn't even hit the rim. Comes back to Davis. Green unattended at the back. Oh, he should have done better. Schaefer did well. It up. Schaefer did very, very well. Anticipated that. The value of the big man under the basket. 36 is by two. Just over seven minutes left, second quarter. The Wildcats led 36, uh, 30, 26 at quarter time. They trail by two now, 36, 38. Al Green surrounded. Oof, well, gee. That one will stand correction, I suspect. Indeed. We had a very good view of that. That's a better one than the referee. Came off Trevor Torrance's fingertips, unfortunately, for the Wildcats. As the 36ers make another substitution and Matthew Reese comes in. Yeah, poor old Al Green was surrounded, but no doubt. That's Torrance. There you go. Fingerprints all over it. Pierce opts for the shot himself. Comes straight down to Grace. One on He's one. only got Pierce to beat. He had support from Torrance. Almost a being called for tunnel foul, the 36, a defensive player. The margin now, there is no margin. It's 38 points apiece. It's hard to find the scoreboards here at the moment. I'm sure they'll improve that before the season starts in earnest. Green to Davis. Can't get around his namesake. He's called for the travel. Took a long time working out what he was going to call in, Sid Stevens. This is Grace. Gee, he is quick. Shot was easily blocked. And it's a Wildcats ball from the side. You'd suspect the Wildcats would be putting Ricky Grace on a bit of weight training. He really is very, very slight. Torrance. Out by range. Allen got up well and I think has been fouled by Simon Cottrell, who really hasn't spent much Two time on the court at all. On the arm on the rebound. Here. Another player who's been around a good deal is Simon Cottrell. Went to Adelaide from four years in Canberra, but before that had played with Nunna Wadding, Hobart, Illawarra, and back in 82, Launceston, one of the formation teams of the NBL. And more clubs than Jack Nicholas though. Indeed. Out with the slap in. The Wildcats are in front, 40 plays 38. This is Matt Reese, his first appearance for Adelaide, a local boy from Adelaide, I believe. Jump ball. Al Green very quick to get his hands on that ball, along with Steve Davis. Well, Davis certainly the taller of the two, but Al Green a lot of determination and still a lot of spring in those heels. Let's see the competition here. Good vision by Jeff Allen. Great vision by Jeff Allen. Credit him with those two points. This is Reese. He was double teamed. It's stolen away by Watterson and Grace gets another two. And the Wildcats are applying full court pressure and they're doing it very effectively at the moment. As Pierce goes over the sideline, but he was fouled. The call is on number 10, Trevor Torrance. And the Wildcats have suddenly jumped to a six point lead. That's three on Torrance. But Grace figuring very prominently in that little scoring foray by the Wildcats. 
they're in a team foul situation that's why Pierce is at the free throw line he missed again from just outside the free throw line he misses again Davis has an opportunity gets them all off the ground draws the foul and will shoot two much to Wilbur's disgust so Jeff Allen picks up another foul it's only his well that's his third Davis holding the tongue like that is an integral part of shooting from the free throw line I suspect he didn't it can't be integral <laughs> Watterson very quickly out to Torrance he ran into a dead end Watterson lost it regains it scrapping with Green the pretty solid scrap too they've called for a jump ball it looks as though Eric Watterson has replaced Cal Bruton in uh, Al Green's sights. Well, I noticed Green having a bit of a scrap with uh, David Close when Close was on the court as well, so I really don't think Al's all that fussy. Exactly. And he's quite prepared to fight out of his division. We've seen that previously. Watterson and Green will contest this jump ball. He's waiting for the boys to wipe the court down. You won't get very good odds on Eric for this one, I don't think. Green wins it decisively. Reese couldn't control it. Reese back to Green. Reese gets up very well. Last time Davis was at the three free throw line, he got up on one of the rebounds. Pierce to Cottrell. Pierce with the shot. And finally, he hits one. And that has an impact on the scoreboard. The 36 is a back to one. 44 plays 43. The Wildcats lead. Ricky Grace makes two. Green, 46-43 now, Pierce again from three-point range, oh it's nice to see him shoot like that, the Iceman is on a roll, Ricky Grace, can he reply, yes he can, well, any crowd loves to see basketball like that, well they need a player like that too don't they, to replace Bruton, the other dimension that he's adding to their game is his speed. They've got someone on a fast break. Uh, I'd like to see more of Mike Ellis on court for that sort of shooting as well. And of course, he's still resting a knee that he had exploratory swerve or a bone scrape on off season. Davis makes two, but certainly Ellis is capable of those three point streaks as well. It's Grace again. The basket stands. Well, I thought the whistle went fairly early. The foul is on Al Green. The Wildcats lead 51-48. Grace has a bonus shot to cut. Well, he's got 14 points, and I'm not sure what he had at half at quarter time, but most of those points would have been in this second quarter. Timeout call. The Wildcats lead the 36ers 51 to 48 at the Entertainment Centre. Wildcats lead the 36ers, 51 plays 48 at the Perth Entertainment Centre. Just under four minutes to play in the first half. And Ricky Grace, who's had a blinder in this second quarter, is at the free throw line with a bonus shot. He's certainly hot when he's shooting well. He increases the Wildcats lead to four points. At various stages during this first half, the Wildcats have threatened to go away with this game, but the 36ers have been resilient. This is Pierce. He's helped them stay in touch with a couple of very timely three-pointers. And he'll shoot one and one here. Or Green will. Or 36ers will. Fouls on Eric Watterson first. Green at the free throw line. Al Green with only two points so far tonight. Status quo is maintained. Watterson, ah, oh, found his way through between Reese and Pierce sensationally. Like I'm not snake. exactly sure how he did that. Like a snake, that was a great body swerve because he was moving at full tilt. Al Green again, the margin is back to six points. 
Rob Dempster, I suspect, fouling off the ball. We'll hear it from Sid Stevens right about now. 24 was the signal. Sid Stevens indicating Robbie Dempster the foul. So Mark Davis will shoot one and one. Davis has 13 points and nine rebounds so far tonight. Doesn't go. Davis gets up again and again. Dempster was foiling him. Reese. Dempster Reese is again. a young man who, uh, I mean, he hasn't done a lot, but he looks fairly composed out there for his first appearance in the NBA. One one yes, he's not been flustered. Dempster incurring the wrath of the referees at the moment. Third foul. We're still three minutes away from half time. So a dangerous period of play now for Rob Dempster. Mind you, the Wildcats have been granted by the opposition coach, Don Shipway, permission to use a rotation of 11 players tonight. So uh, they can afford to get a couple fouled out. Mark Davis is down to 50% from the free throw line. He usually makes a second. The first has been atrocious on almost each time, each time he's gone to the line. One but to come. Knocked away by Torrance, but it's stolen by Davis. Now Pierce slings it out to Reese. That's a good shot. He is playing well. Nice pass from Darrell Pierce as well. Made as if to shoot, then slipped it off. That took the pressure off Reese. Just under three minutes left to go in the first half. Wildcats up by three, 54-51. Incidentally, the Wildcats have won both the previous Rotary Charity Challenges played here in Perth. Robbie Dempster did well. Watterson has close, and Trevor Torrance. Torrance must have come out of the crowd because I didn't see him there. Very alert play by Watterson. He, he was the only player, I think, that realised that Torrance was there. And he gave every indication he was going to go the other way. The margin is out to five points now, and we've got just over two minutes to play in the first half. Pierce, as cool as ever, gets the 36ers back to within three points. Watterson, close. Well, as we said before, he hasn't quite found range with the shooting. David Close. Al Green. Pierce, press applied again by the Wildcats. Now Green ever alert. Pierce, no look pass finds Cottrell. His shot doesn't find the basket though. Tiny Pinder, Watto, Torrance again. <laughs> A big travel. If nobody else had seen it, Al Green was going to call it. He'll make a good referee one day, won't he? Give him enough wall, he'll make anything. He's going to have a, a break now as Scott Ninnis comes back in. The Wildcats lead by three. Minute and a half to play in the second quarter here at the Perth Entertainment Centre. Ninnis to Reese. Reese from just inside the three-point line. Comfortable rebound to Cottrell. And the margin now is just one point. Torrance, will he go all the way? Yes, he will. Well, Cottrell made a fantastic diving attempt to get up there for the rejection. Ended up on his back on the floor. Torrance got the two, it's 58-55. Just over a minute to play in the first half. That's a fairly solid bat on the head for Derek Watterson. Wouldn't want him to be upset with you, would he? <laughs> Cottrell steps around Pender. Easy layup, or as easy as it gets. Wildcats ball in the forecourt. 54 seconds to play, first half. One point ball game. Tiny Pinder makes it a three point game. Ninnis on the drive. Reese fouled as he went up by Trevor Torrance or Robbie Dempster. 
Robbie Dempster it is, and that's foul number four. So, let's see how Matt Reese reacts to the pressure of free throws. A little noise from the crowd as the redhead lines up. Ball comes back to him. And again. Yep. One of two. 58 trail 60. Couple of plays left in this half. Dempster, clever pass to find Pender baseline. Great effort, Robbie Dempster. So this could be the last play of the half. 20 seconds left on the game clock. There will be another. David Close looks up. You'd have trouble finding that clock. Yeah. 12 seconds, 10 now. Watterson looks at it. Will he take the shot himself? Yes, he will. And makes two. So the Wildcats make the split six points, 64 to 58. At half time, the lead is six. They led by four at quarter time. More to come in the second half. Welcome back to the Perth Entertainment Centre, the start of the second half, the third quarter. The Wildcats led by four at quarter time, 30-26, and by six at half time, 64-58. To, to get the third quarter underway, referee Jeff Weeks and Wally Foreman. Jeff Allen contests the tip off with Bradkey who won it and gets it down to Davis. Darrell Pierce will set up the first play for the Adelaide 36ers. They trail by six, they trail by four at quarter time. Davis to Mackay, to Mackay, and eventually it's Davis who puts the shot up. It almost came back for Schaefer. Grace throws it away. Mackay has it for the 36ers. Schaefer, with all the room and time that he needed, picks up his own rebound and at the second attempt makes the basket. Very honest worker, Schaefer. He's worked very hard. Well, another misdirected pass from the Wildcats. Still early days. The bad news from the dressing room at halftime is that Tiny Pinder has a fairly sore ankle or heel. So Wildcats fans will hope that's not serious. Can't be too bad, he's out there now. Davis, can he turn Pinder? No, let's go back to Schaefer. Finds range with the help of the rim. 62 trails at 64. So the Wildcats still to score in the second half. Torrance works his way baseline, puts it up and finds range. Well, McKay did that extremely well. Hassled by Ellis from behind and Torrance from in front still managed to get up there and make the layup. Ellis. Grace, quick pass, finds Jeff Allen. Pinder. Oh, the hasty sort of shot in the circumstances. Okay. Schaefer once again working on the baseline and finds range. That ties up the game at 66 apiece. Strong opening from the 36ers to this third quarter and the Wildcats want a timeout. 66 points apiece with nine and a half, just under 10 minutes to play in this third quarter and we're about to see the Perth Wildcats dancing girls they're more than that in fact they are entertainment on their own this is the performance company roll and ankle and if you're a regular seven viewer we hope you are you'll recognize this tune please do not throw the little paper airplanes around thank you
so in the mood and the Wildcats and the 36ers in the mood 66 points apiece Torrance Allen has really put in some work tonight Jeff Allen in his debut appearance for the Perth team Torrance misses from three-point range and Davis the chairman of the boards is there to clean up McKay Brad Key slips baseline side of Allen and draws the foul. So Jeff Allen says, is that me? Yes it is, and that's foul number four for Jeff Allen. Brad Key, seven points so far tonight. Six rebounds, only one in offense, five in defense. had only made one penalty attempt before that one he got the first missed that one and this is his second of this sequence and makes it so Adelaide hits the lead once again 67 plays 66 nine and a half minutes to play in the third quarter Ellis to Pindar well that's a great shot that was a great shot McKay goes long to Davis who rode the bump from Ellis. Shot was too flat. This is Grace. Two on one. He takes them both on. They put and drop. Ellis is there. And the foul. Trevor Torrance. Ten goal. It is two. I thought he was looking for Mike McKay, who's the opposing number ten. Davis comes in. That's Steve Davis comes in. And Jeff Allen goes out for the Wildcats. And 36ers take possession from the side. They lead, sorry, they trail by a point. The Wildcats 68. Allen's contribution has been 10 points and 8 rebounds so far. Yes, it's been an honest performance, given that he's still not just trying to adjust to new teammates, but trying to adjust to a new game to some extent. New refereeing, new surroundings. A two points to Schaefer gives him 16 points for the game. Be very close to the game high scorer for Adelaide. Ellis missing to the right. Davis. He was surrounded by Wildcats and loses possession at the crucial moment. The Wildcats regain possess possession from the side. Grace. Steve Davis. Had a great season last year, Steve Davis along with Trevor Torrance Schaefer Brad P tries it from just inside three point territory Davis picks it up and 36ers lead again just by one 71 to 70 a lot of basketball left in this game yet Ellis faced by McKay, teammates for Australia over the summer or in fact over the spring they toured the USA in November with the Boomers side McKay finds Davis baseline he turns Steve Davis gets his own rebound Schaefer lost the plot a little then three on one Grace tried to do it all himself and should have he set it up he just didn't finish it off well, he doesn't look terribly happy with himself and I guess you can understand that Wildcats ball at the side Pender unattended 74-71 the Wildcats three points the good Just over seven minutes left in the third quarter. Steve Davis, the foul. Alan Black didn't like it. It's Steve Davis's fourth foul. Mike Ellis taking a rest. The Wildcats captain. The Wildcats lead by three. 74 plays 71. This is McKay. Now Brad King. Steve Davis in his face. Schaefer. 
McKay again over the top of Watterson and tapped in by Cottrell. This is Grace, pinned up. He goes over Bradke and he's drawn the foul. Tiny Pinder will go to the free throw line. The Wildcats leading by one. It's a two-point break to the Wildcats with just over six and a half minutes to play in this third quarter here at the Perth Entertainment Centre. McKay with the shot. Came off Bradkey, down to Davis. Grace again with this scintillating speed. Knocked away by Pierce. Evans kept it in play and eventually they get it to Pinder under the basket. He's been fouled. Bradkey. Bradkey was it. Problems for the 36ers. Do the break to your course. I think it was. I think it was. Foul is seven. We got two shots. Yes, no it's Bradkey. In the first court. So Look at it one seven. more time. Bradkey just slapped Pinder from behind. And I think that's the ball game for Mark Bradkey. So just check our stats with the stats on the bench. Well, he's had enough anyway. It is indeed. Well, that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate perhaps for the game as well as for Mark Bradkey. No doubt about the foul though. It was a foul right, but he is a very, very solid performer. And I think as Wally said, the beginning of the telecast will be the cornerstone of the 36ers in season 1990. A very early night for Mark Bradkey. They can't afford to have him sitting down this early in the major games during the course of the season. But well, certainly going to put put the pressure on Dan Clawson to perform for the rest of this game he hasn't seen a lot of court time <laughs> 77 plays 73 the Wildcats lead by four just over six minutes to play in the third quarter McKay goes to green this is Pierce now Clawson across the top it goes to McKay they need this it rims out Schaefer Gee, he really has played his heart out tonight. He'll be an asset to the 36ers, and they maintain possession. The Wildcats in the zone, and the 36ers don't seem to be wanting to penetrate it, even on the fast break at the moment. Happy to shoot from outside. Well, if you've got Darrell Pierce on your side, why wouldn't you be? Grace. Yeah, some heavy traffic under the basket wall. Shot from Davis. Pinder trying to tap it in. Clawson did well. This is Pierce. Over the top of the... Oh! Evans and De Grace goes Pierce. And he has put the 36ers back in front by two. 14 points, Darrell Pierce. Most of them since quarter time. Davis, can he turn? Well, can't get past the outstretched arm of Dan Fawson. Green, twisting and turning, overshoots. Evans finds Grace on the outlet, has pinned the left, goes right to Watterson instead, he loses it, turnover. McKay, Schaefer to his left, the basket to his right, that's where he goes, didn't pay dividends, now two on one. Tries again. 36ers win again. Grace gets a second chance and was very lucky to get that chance. He certainly was. Sometimes I think his own pace causes his problems or causes his undoing. This is Green. Inside they go to Schaefer. He turns straight into trouble. Substitutions being made. Evans comes in replacing Pinder. And Davis comes in, replacing McKay. I say Evans comes in, Allen comes in. Evans is already out there. 79 points apiece as Don Shipway gives instructions to Al Green. Schaefer at the line. 
had 18 points before that. 19 now. Eight rebounds. Make that 20 points for the night and a workmanlike effort from Tom Schaefer. Very impressive. It's been an eight-point turnaround in this third quarter. The Wildcats led by six at half time. Six-point turnaround now. It's all tied up at 81 points apiece. But the 36ers have come out blazing in this third quarter, largely as a result of some good shooting by the fellow who just put the shot up, Pierce. Now Schaefer from the other side. Losing the advantage. Sid Stevens making the call. Three, three for the push out. It's against Mark Davis. So the Wildcats get possession from the side. That's the third team foul against the 36ers in this third quarter. We've got four minutes to play in the period. Four team fouls against the Wildcats. And a blocking foul is now called against Clawson. Alan did well then. Race Alan. goes out and close comes in. Watch Alan. Throws the ball out right first, then drags it left. Clawson trying to compensate, can't get there in time. Didn't have position and therefore is called for the block. So 81 points apiece. Wildcats ball. Jeff Weeks just making it clear that Daryl Pierce knocked it out of play. A sensational shot from behind the line of the backboard by Craig Evans. 83-81. Been some good early season shooting. There has. Al Green finds a lane. The push that caused the travel. Definitely a side ball. So the Wildcats wanted the travel, goal. but in push fact, Sid Stevens says that it was Steve Davis's push that caused the travel. And so for Steve Davis, it's an early shower, I suspect. Five fouls. So the lad originally from Oakey in Queensland checks out with eight points, three rebounds and five, 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 five fouls. Always love the alliterations. I know the feeling. Davis is at the free throw line. Mark Davis is at the free throw line. Steve Davis is on the bench. And will remain there. Davis missing with his first again. Watterson goes to close. This is Evans. Now Watterson. They're really moving quickly in offense, the Wildcats. Evans with the shot. Dempster over the top, but Davis too tall. Now Pierce. Just over three minutes to play in the third quarter. The Wildcats lead by two. 83 plays 81. Green to Schaefer to Davis on the baseline. Clawson couldn't control it. It's stolen away by Watterson. He did well at ground level. He had players left and right. He went right and close didn't let him down. Yeah, the crowd like it and so they should. Eric Watterson set that up well. David Close provided the perfect finishing touch. 85-81, Wildcats up by four. Clawson plays the swing man. Rob Dempster gets the hand in. Adelaide ball at the side. 50 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Mike McKay runs to the right-hand side to take it. He's taken the place of Darrell Pierce. I'd like to see Adelaide with the two of them on the court at the same time. But it's Al Green who's going to hold the point and take the three-point shot, rims out, Dempster hands off to Watterson. Wildcats running in numbers, Evans goes through with the practice routine anyway. I suppose it's handy to maintain the practice routine. Schaefer and Green. Has Davis left of him. Green again, McKay has made the cut, that's ignored. 
Schaefer tries to find the lane. He's done it once in this quarter. Couldn't do it that time successfully. Evans comes away. Watterson, close to the right, goes by himself. Craig Evans played the trailer to perfection. He showed a fair amount of courage to put that in too. It wasn't quite as simple as it looked. He found himself under the basket and leaning back. That was a great play by Craig Evans. And it's extended the Wildcats lead to six. Back to the half-time margin. The crowd not happy with that call from Sid Stevens. Neither was Alan Black. I thought he was looking for Mecca for a moment. Let's see it again. Close and green. Well, David Close wore a hand in the face. Al Green at the free throw line. We've got a minute 42 to play in the third quarter. A oh, great tip in. Tapped in by sport. Davis. 87 plays 83. Four point break to the Wildcats. They led by six at half time, four at quarter time. Craig yeah. Evans is called for the travel. Now Green looking to the bench for direction or perhaps inspiration. Now McKay, three point specialist, goes into two point range. Allen got in well. Unnecessary turnover perhaps. The Wildcats aren't made to pay for it though and they'll appreciate that. Close. Can't turn green, but fine support from Allen. Spike G can do it at both ends. Just under a minute to play in the third quarter as McKay puts up the long bomb. Allen with the rebound. He's working hard at both ends of the court now. He's playing very well. Close got it to Watterson and Allen trailing through, crashes through the keyway, making space as he goes. And he now, I think, has 16 points in the game. Green goes wide to McKay. Green at the top of the keyway. This is Ninnis. Davis, Ninnis. 30 seconds to play, and the ball drops. Good work, Simon Cottrell. One play is the call from the Wildcats bench. There's the game clock. 20 seconds left. Oh, Craig Evans unattended. Cottrell and Green let him go. They Gaping left the holes. lane wide open. Did they ever? So 93-85, make that 87. And that's the end of the third quarter, so the Wildcats go to the final change with a lead of six points. They led at quarter time by four, 30 to 26. They led by six at half time, 64-58. They maintain that advantage, 93 to 87 at three quarter time. Welcome back to the Perth Entertainment Centre. The start of the final quarter of the 1990 Rotary Charity Challenge Match. Leading scorers to three-quarter time, Tom Schaefer with 20 points and Mark Davis with 18 for the 36ers. Tiny Pinder and Ricky Grace with 17 points. Of This is Al Green. Adelaide will want to knock down the six-point deficit quickly. It's got to be a charge. McKay got in there very quickly. Watto kept going at him. Watch again how quickly McKay gets possession. There he is, already there as Watterson goes up. No doubt about it, charge call. 93 plays 87. No change to the three-quarter time score. The 36ers have the opportunity to do something about that. McKay goes inside to Cottrell, who makes no mistake. This is Watterson. With him is Ninnis. Dempster, well done. Allen lost control of it, but it came off Green's foot. So the Wildcats maintain possession. Dempster comes across to the side to take the inbound pass. Watterson, close at the top of the keyway, but he doesn't want him. He goes to Dempster instead. 
Strong rebound by Davis. He's out number three to one, so he has to double back. Minnis goes wide to McKay. Wildcats staying with the zone. Well, that went the full width of the court. And Mark Davis back a little bit further than the full width of the court. Well, the ball didn't, but Mark Davis did. And his foot outside. Dempster. Quick pass finds Pender. He gets it back to Watterson. Dempster. Cottrell with the steal. Say goodnight. Whoa! Well, Robbie Dempster got back there fairly. He Great needed effort. to, didn't he? Great chase, yep. He gave it away. Look at Robbie Dempster make ground. And clean as a whistle. Simon Cottrell just taking it a little too easy, I think. He gave Dempster the opportunity to get hand on ball. This is close. Watterson, Allen, too hot that pass. Right Not idea, for the though. man in the front row. Right idea. No, he did well to take that. Scott Ninnis. McKay. Al Green. Ninnis again. McKay to his left. Green makes two. 93 plays 91. So Adelaide has done, I guess, what Don Shipway wanted the team to do. Cut back that deficit. The Wildcats haven't scored since three-quarter time. Indeed, they had a slow time off at the second, uh, the, the third quarter as well, Walt. Yes, they've been a little tardy at getting away, but they're edging their way back into this game. They're just down by two points now. So it's still very much there for the taking, this victory in this match as Ninnis slips it to Green. Green's shot fell well short, but Davis strong under the basket. Cottrell is there, just a little too strong for Dempster. It's come off Cottrell's leg. And the Wildcats get possession from the side, and they make three changes. Torrance, Ellis and Grace all come in. In fact, I think they're running 11 players tonight. Indeed they are. They have permission to run 11. Ellis and Pinder combining. Ninnis is with Ellis. Pinder. Gee, he's a very clever basketballer. Long pass. Torrance was a wake up to it, but he couldn't get there. McKay able to maintain control for the 36ers. Green goes to Ninnis. Good shot. This is one point game. 95 plays 94, the Wildcats lead, but just. This is Cottrell, gives it to Ninnis. The 36 is on the move again, a basket out of this play will give them the lead. Davis. That was a hot pass, McKay just not able to control it, it's stolen by Allen. Grace has it now, again he wants to go all the way on his own, Allen's there to tidy up for him. Another great effort from Jeff Allen, 20 points tonight so far. Sitting on four fouls as well, Jeff Allen. Chances are we'll make that five. Went in. Okay, got two points. Foul is number nine, back in, hand in the back. I guess I shouldn't have spoken. So good night to Jeff Allen, folks. That should be the end of his ball game. So he checks out with five fouls. Just waiting for the bench to top them up. Yep. Well, that's all up. The he bench wasn't aware. Them up. But that's been an impressive debut by Jeff Allen. And I'm sure Alan Black would be very happy with what he's seen from the big fellow. 210 centimetres. He will give them much needed height. Timeout has been called. 97 plays 96. The Wildcats lead by a point at the Perth Entertainment Centre. <laughs> Wildcats lead by the solitary point. Eight minutes and 20 seconds left on the game clock. A good crowd here tonight. Just short of a sellout. And I'm told that's more than 8,000 people in this venue. Cottrell misses. Torrance. Race. 
tried the quick pass, again it was too hot. Al Green finds Scotty Ninnis baseline. No range, Adelaide ball off the hands of Robbie Dempster. Wildcats still playing the zone, Adelaide still unable to exploit it. Getting nobody inside where they need someone. Grace, bounce pass, Ellis, baseline, back to Pinder, cleverly, gets his own rebound. And two more to the Wildcats, 99 plays, 96. Quick hands from Pinder. This is McKay, the Wildcats with a very short team on court at the moment. Take Pinder out and uh, there's very little height out there. The ball keeps coming down to Tiny Pinder. So that helps, that'll be a jump ball. Ricky well, Grace will be jumping out of his league. <laughs> Against Simon Cottrell, it's not going to be a lot of fun for either of them. <laughs> Just hope for Ricky Grace's yeah, sake that Simon Cottrell doesn't land on him. Well, if Ricky Grace starts on Simon Cottrell's toes, he'll be okay. Just 185 centimetres, Ricky Grace. Not the shortest man in the Wildcats lineup. He's got a couple of centimetres on Mike Ellis, number six there in the foreground. And Grace, in fact, spots it away. Cottrell mistiming Grace, his jump. Grace unemployed at the moment, but I know he has a political science degree. I reckon if he sticks around until Monday, he could be Premier here. <laughs> Go! This is certainly a science working out the West Australian political situation. This is Ninnis, oh, and Grace's hands were good. Davis. The rejection came from Pinder. Tiny's happy. His bench is happy. Let's have a look at it again. Up goes Tiny. Swat. Mm. That was well done. Get nosebleeds up there, don't you? Oh. And an oxygen mask. He was up there a while, too. Ellis. Mike Ellis has only uh, one point in the game so far, which is an extraordinary situation, but he hasn't seen a lot of court time. No, he hasn't indeed. Still recovering from that uh, knee surgery off-season. Third foul, Tiny Pender. No great worry. Seven minutes left on the clock, just over. Schaefer, another serviceable player tonight. Tom Schaefer, in fact, better than serviceable, Ellis. Long pass, Torrance. Wildcats retain possession more by luck than judgment. Grace. McKay comes away with it. Called for the charge, and that is a tough call. Have a look at this again. Well, he's on the turn. Guess there has to be some leeway. It's pretty solid, and Robbie Dempster certainly had position. A lot of puzzled looks on the 36's bench. Yeah, they uh, they seem a little disgruntled, but I guess if they get back into the lead, they'll be gruntled again. They've outscored the Wildcats nine points to six so far in this final quarter. 99 plays 96. The Wildcats lead by three. Three-second violation on the keyway. Six and a half minutes to play in this game. This is Ninnis. Grace is with him. He did that well, Ninnis. Made space out there for Schaefer. Comes down to Green. Now Pierce. Davis over the top. And eventually they get it in the bucket. So the Wildcats come forward again. Adelaide gone to his own this quarter. Timeout is called by the 36ers. The Wildcats lead by three, 101 to 98. Back the Wildcats out by three points with just under six minutes to play in this game. As we said before, the Wildcats have won the two previous Rotary Charity Challenges. Trying to make it three on the trot now. Mark Davis, Darrell Pierce, had a three-point shooting streak during the second quarter, but that's died. In fact, the third quarter, I think it was, Rob, wasn't it? Correct. There's only a point in this game now. The Wildcats lead 101 to 100. This is Grace. Inside he goes to Pinder. Good pass. 
and now foul problems for the Wildcats and Dempster's Dempster. got a few of them and I suspect Robbie is uh, probably about to check out so both Steve Davis and Steve Davis, Jeff Allen and Rob Dempster all fouled out for the Wildcats Mark Bradke is out for the 36ers but the 36ers have possession and the opportunity to take the lead in this game for the first time since very early in the game. Dempster checked out with eight points for the night wall. Craig Evans receiving last minute instructions from Alan Black before he comes in. One hundred and one plays one hundred. Five minutes twenty seven to play. The Wildcats looking to win their first ever fixture here at the Perth Entertainment Centre. Albeit a charity game, I'm sure they'd like to win it. Green. Davis is there. But it's Grace who comes away with the ball for the Wildcats. Almost lost control of it. Double dribble. Let's have a quick look, watch him change hands. He's challenged, runs off his knee, and he just has to change hands. It's gone too far around his body. I think the thinking is that if you keep running fast enough, the ref won't notice. Unfortunately, when he's right in front of you, the, the theory doesn't always work. So, Adelaide ball at the side, Scotty Ninnis waiting, apprehensively. There's Daryl Pierce running alongside him. Green, Schaefer baseline, checks inside of Torrance. Tiny Pinder's hand. So Tiny checks, commits foul number four. Let's just see it, watch the hand come in, and there it is. Just across the forearm of Schaefer. In the act of shooting is the judgment of the referee. So Schaefer shoots two. He's the game high scorer with 20. Stays on 20. Craig Evans comes forward to the ball. Elvis alongside him. Takes control for the Wildcats. Grace. Just pops it up and finds the basket for 103. Three point lead, 103 to 100. Four and a half minutes left on the clock. Ninnis. Pierce outside, oh. levels the scores. Well, just inside the three-point line, says the referee. So 102 to 103. Make that 105. The Wildcats hold a two-point advantage. Part of a very big crowd here at the Entertainment Centre, and they're getting their money's worth. The Wildcats lead by two momentarily. It's all tied up again. No, it's not. The Wildcats lead by one. 105 plays, 104. The chance now for the Wildcats to extend their lead. It comes off Torrance to Grace. Ninnis. Cheap foul. Has been penalised. Foul is six on the back of the arc. Evans goes out. Watterson comes in. And the foul is on Scott Ninnis. That's the third team foul for the 36ers in this final quarter. The Wildcats are in a team foul situation. They have five. Ellis wants to put it up. Oh! <laughs> Heavens above. He may as well have been in the front row of seats. He was in no position to make that shot. He put it up and it dropped. So that's valuable breathing space for the Wildcats. They lead by three. Another basket here would make things more comfortable for them, but in fact it's the 36ers who get the basket. The basket of Al Green's was almost as unbelievable as Mike Ellis's. Checked by Green that time. It's Green who draws the foul. The young lady likes it. See it again. Ellis goes past Ninnis. There's a hand from Ninnis. <laughs> a little rearranging of the hair from Al Green. He leaves nothing to doubt, does he? Right. There's one from Tom Schaefer. So Tiny Foul should shoot two. The body push. He got two. And those two quick fouls have put the 36ers in a team foul situation. It wouldn't have made any difference here because Pinder was shooting. 
but it will make a big difference for the remainder of this game. Three minutes 24 to play, 107 to 106. The Wildcats are in front. Schaefer's fourth foul, 324 remaining. Tiny misses. The view from the roof of the entertainment centre. Yep, bit of help from the rim. Tiny Pender goes to 22 points. Still from Grace, Pines Torrance cleverly banks it off the glass and we'll get the bonus. Interesting, on that occasion, Grace was prepared to share the ball around. Earlier in this game, he tended to go to the basket when he had other options and he was becoming, I felt, just a little predictable. But that time, with only one option, and that was Ty well, two options, he could have gone himself, the other option was Torrance, he opted to pass it off, and with good effect. He's no doubt gaining confidence in his teammates. Al Green, his side down by four, Pierce. Schaefer turns Torrance, and makes two, so still only a two-point ball game. We're into the last three minutes here. Great entertainment for the crowd. Ellis misses. Felt he was fouled on the way through. Jeff Weeks was on the spot, didn't see it that way. Pierce. Adelaide could use a couple of three-point bombs from now. Going inside instead. Green can't make it. Grace comes forward. Now. Tar Torrance was there, didn't go up, left it to Grace to go up. Torrance could have been there for the trailer. Been some missed opportunities offensively by the Wildcats, and they could be punished for them. They only lead by two points. Ellis missed one, they should have converted then. But there's a long three-point bomb from Ricky Grace. That was timely. I was about to criticise him for going up when Torrance should have, but uh, I think I'll reserve that. <laughs> Just over two minutes left, and timeout has been called by the Adelaide 36ers. The Wildcats lead by five, 113 to 108. Welcome back. 113 plays 108, and just over two minutes left to play according to the official game clock. 208. The Wildcats out by five. 20 seconds on the shot clock. The 36 is in possession, or they were. Here's Grace again. He is quick and he will... No, he won't go all the way. New Pinder was behind him. Watterson to Ellis. Inside to Torrance. And that should make the game safe for the Wildcats. They lead by seven points and we've got less than two minutes to play. Minnis finds Green. They need something from Pierce. The game just slipping away from Adelaide now. Torrance stops and shoots for two. Doesn't go. Pender gets up. Uncontested. Shouldn't have happened. Grace gets the pick set by Torrance. Can't make it go. And Pierce comes forward. Schaefer. There's Davis under the basket. Easy two. Five point four game. The Wildcats in front. Uh, make that seven. No, but an intentional foul. So the Wildcats will shoot two. Schaefer's intentional foul. The Wildcats get to shoot two with no opposition and get the ball at the centre. Have a look again. Schaefer, whammy. The old professional foul. And he's not particularly happy, Tom Schaefer. He's having plenty to say to Jeff Weeks. The South Australian referee officiating here tonight and a timeout is called by the Wildcats. They lead by five points and we've got a minute and six seconds to play. There's the 36ers bench. Their coach Don Shipway down on his haunches and behind him a familiar 36ers figure, their new assistant coach Peter Ally. Yeah, nice to see Peter staying Still with the team. He's given is. great service to Adelaide and particularly to... Uh, to Don Shipway as assistant coach. Peter worked with him when he was a player. The Performance Company is the name of the dance troupe. And this young lady has had a great time tonight. I think she's a future member of the Performance Company. He's not. No. 
find your Wilbur managers to keep time fairly well. It's been a fantastic crowd here tonight. It's something of a dress rehearsal for them too, I guess. Remembering that it's not necessarily a basketball crowd here tonight. This is the Rotary Challenge. And many of these people, I'm sure, are not regular basketball goers. But the atmosphere has been excellent. And I'm sure with a basketball crowd in, it will be even better. And the next basketball fixtures here in Perth will be on the 9th, 10th and 11th of March. The Kmart Classic, the pre-season tournament, the official pre-season tournament. The 36ers will be back along with the Wildcats, the Westside Saints and the Hobart Devils. The 9th, 10th and 11th of March. Tickets are available from the Entertainment Centre. Three great days of basketball promised there. So, with 106 left on the official game clock, and Don Shipway looking pensive, Tiny Pinder, by virtue of that intentional foul, gets the shoot too. You'll notice there's nobody around the keyway, so nothing to put him off. Well, there must have been something. And the Wildcats will get possession at the side again. So that makes it a six-point ball game, and that makes it just that much harder for Adelaide, especially with the Wildcats having possession. It'd take Pierce. a very bad team to lose it from here. Snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Exactly. It's been done before. So Adelaide should press all the time now. Just trying to force the mistake. You might as well lose by 16 as by six. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Grace with Green. Watterson with Room. Reese. 40 seconds, 35 seconds to play. Davis. Pierce. Pinder with the rebound, and the Wildcats are safe. 116 to 110, 25 seconds to play. Grace finds Ellis. No one there to help him out. Pierce hassling. Had to commit the foul in the end. Number four, the hands. Got one and one now. Side ball. No okay. aggro between Side Mike Ellis and Daryl Pierce Side at any ball. time. Great competitors. Pierce got the hand and then just had to try to slap to keep the ball going forward. Even if he hadn't have taken possession, he had to hassle Ellis. So the Wildcats have elected to go to the side rather than take the one and one. Safety situation. Wasn't really needed. Just over 10 seconds left in the game. Grace. The crowd counted down, Ellis with a chance to finish it off. Oh, clever pass, finds Torrance. Backs it in, on the buzzer. And the Wildcats have won their third Rotary Charity Challenge by eight points. 118 to 110. They led by four at quarter time, by six at half time and at three quarter time. Finally wrapped it up by eight points. Let's have a look at the game-high scorers. Tiny Pinder notched up 23 points. Ricky Grace got 22. Tom Schaefer, the game-high scorer for Adelaide, with 22, along with Mark Davis. Torrance, a very creditable 21 points. Jeff Allen with 18. It was a good performance from him. Darrell Pierce with 16 for Adelaide. Scotty Ninnis with 12. Al Green and Simon Cottrell, each with 10 points. So, James Crawford, who didn't take any part in the, ga part in the game, but you'd imagine, Wold, that the Wildcats would have been fairly happy. I would think they'd be particularly happy with Jeff Allen's performance, and Ricky Grace also showed flashes of brilliance. He's a very capable athlete and a very skillful player. So, yes, I think uh, most of the signs, remembering that Crawford is still to come into this lineup, all the signs are encouraging for 1990 as far as the Wildcats are concerned. OK, we'll take a break and come back to wrap it up the other side of these messages. Welcome back. We'll wrap up this game now, which the Wildcats have won 118 points to 110. And perhaps for an insight on just how they played and how well they've been received by their coaching staff and management, let's find out what Alan Black thinks. Talking to him in the change rooms now is Sevens Neil Poe. Alan, a great first up win in your new home? Yes, uh, the guys played very well, I thought. Uh, Played a lot of fouls, but I guess uh, over-eagerness by both the referees and the players probably uh, explained that a bit. But 
they were keen and our fast break worked pretty well. Now it's supposed to be a charity game but it was pretty rough and tough out there especially in the first half. Any time you get an NBL team playing another NBL team, especially Perth Adelaide, it's going to be tough and uh, we all knew that. Now I guess you're pretty happy with the uh, debut performances of your new recruits and especially Ricky Grace. Yes, Ricky's uh, just an excellent defensive player. Uh, that steal he made uh, towards the end virtually sewed the game up for us and uh, that's what he's famous for. And The crowd will see uh, just an excellent defensive player. Jeff Allen, tall and strong. Yeah, Jeff ran the court very well. Uh, one thing we've been trying to get him to do is to finish the break for us and put the ball in if they miss, and uh, he did that very, very well. Okay, and you've got a few weeks to work on the Cats before their next performance? Yes, uh, I hope that our, our shooting is a little bit better. Uh, we hope to fine tune our fast break a little bit more and uh, hopefully not foul as much. <laughs> okay, Alan, thanks a lot. Good no luck. Reason. Okay, so there's the line of youngsters waiting for the two teams to come back out and sign autographs for them. Wally uh, Alan Black mentioned shooting. In fact, it was down for both sides. 54% for the Wildcats and 41% for Adelaide tonight. I think we'll put that down to early season blues, Dave. I'm sure it will improve as they go along, but uh, I think the, uh, the uh, Wildcats are going to be a better side, uh, particularly for the inclusion of Alan. Gives them a little bit of height, a little bit of strength that they've perhaps lacked. And he's a very mobile man for a big man. And Grace, obviously, is a very exciting player. But I suspect that the, that the 36ers are in for a long and tough season. OK, well, Mark Bradke, as we said, will be the cornerstone of their side. But uh, I think they saw enough tonight from Tom Schaefer I, to have a lot of confidence in that young man's yeah, ability. The shining light, obviously, was Schaefer for them. He worked very hard at both ends of the court. Uh, he's not all that tall, but uh, he gets in there and mixes it with the big fellows. And, uh, and Bradke and Schaefer will obviously be... Uh, the strengths of that team but uh, after that it just seems to fall away a little bit to me Dave and I, I, I think they're going to struggle. Okay so a split night for West Australian interests the Eagles going down in Melbourne but uh, the Wildcats surviving in Adelaide winning by eight points here tonight 118 to 110 a couple of happy fans and uh, we'll be back at the Perth Entertainment Centre again on Sunday March 11th as part of the Kmart Basketball Classic. At the Entertainment Centre, four teams will be here. Adelaide 36ers, Perth Wildcats, Westside Saints and the Hobart Devils. It promises some great basketball. You get a chance to get along and do so. Tickets are available from the Entertainment Centre. As I said, you'll see the action right here on 7. From us for now. The 1990 NBL Rotary Challenge was brought to you by HBF Advantage Insurance and the Swan Brewery, makers of Emu Export Lager. Monday night on...